Well, congratulations to both of you. Uh, I want to talk to you, Montgomery Reeves, on corporate law. Uh, we've had some activist groups that believe that companies should address abortion, the Second Amendment, climate change, and ESG issues. In your view, can company directors be held liable for a failure to address social and political issues under Caremark and similar cases? Thank you for the question, Senator. Um, under Delaware law, uh, directors of corporations owe two overarching duties, the duty of care and the duty of loyalty. Um, Delaware law requires that directors act in the best interest of the corporation, uh, but there is a lot of deference that's afforded to directors uh, in the exercise of their duties. Uh, the question about whether or not uh, a director would be found liable for having breached their duties for not doing a particular thing would be a complex one that would uh, require us to look closely into the facts of the case. Uh, but there is a lot of discretion uh, for precisely how uh, directors exercise their fiduciary duties. In a conversation this year with Columbia Law School students, you suggested that corporate law, quote, is a vehicle by which society can tackle pressing social issues, end of quote. In your opinion, how could corporate law be used to tackle social issues? Thank you so much for the question, Senator. Um, I don't remember uh, that particular quote. Uh, I do remember the uh, conversation uh, and the question uh, that was presented was, does, uh, are, do directors have the leeway to consider ESG issues? That was the context. Uh, and I think that my answer was something like what I said to you a few minutes ago, which is uh, directors of Delaware companies obviously owe those two overarching duties that I talked about. And, uh, but beyond that, Delaware is pretty, pretty lenient. That is, directors have a lot of discretion. Uh, so even though they have to act in the best interest of the, the company, they have a lot of discretion. A director may determine that uh, he or she uh, needs to consider uh, specific issues, uh, things like, you know, I don't know what issues you might have in mind, but specific ESG issues, and that's what that panel was focused on, uh, in acting in the best interest of the company. And my statements were simply to say that's not automatically a violation of fiduciary duties under Delaware law. That's a, there's a lot of discretion under Delaware law. Yeah. Uh, you, you served as uh, co-chair of the Delaware Supreme Court uh, Diversity Strategic Planning Committee. Uh, I have this question. The report urged the Delaware Supreme Court to, quote, take steps to reduce implicit bias and identity threat in court environment. Uh, give me your idea of what identity threat is and what steps should take to reduce implicit bias. Thank you so much for the question, Senator. Um, I'm familiar with the, re the report generally. I'm not familiar with that particular uh, recommendation. That was a, I did serve on the committee, uh, but the recommendations uh, were made by a large group uh, of people and the recommendations were made to the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court has not adopted all of the recommendations uh, and we have not tackled that particular recommendation. So I'm not exactly sure what that specific phrase that you uh, read, what's intended by that specific phrase and it's not something that we have yeah. um, that we have discussed and decided how to address. Okay, and Mr. Chung, uh, I'm going to ask you a very general question on the issue of judicial philosophy. But before I ask that question, particularly on my side of the aisle, over the course of the last 20 months, members have been trying to get people to state a. I think a, you'd call it a general judicial philosophy. And a lot of my colleagues are irritated because nobody wants to express a judicial philosophy. And, and I don't understand why nobody would want to do that. So I have this question to you. Uh, when it comes to describing your judicial philosophy, uh, would you, how would you describe yourself, you know, and that's usually either being an originalist or being a uh, uh, person for a uh, living constitution, or would you describe your, or just simply 
Tell me your judicial philosophy. Uh, <clears throat> thank you, Ranking Member Grassley. Uh, I believe if I were confirmed, if I had the great fortune of being confirmed, my judicial philosophy would be largely informed by my decades of experience as a prosecutor and a litigator, uh, so it would be very practical. It would recognize the limits of judicial power. Uh, I would work to issue clear rulings that uh, made the holding and the underlying uh, rationale clear, uh, obviously to give all parties a fair and open hearing and to rule only on the record using the Supreme Court and Third Circuit precedent and the method of interpretation that is embodied in that precedent. Uh, could I ask one more question? I think it takes less than a minute. Uh, if, uh, and this is to both of you. If confirmed, will you be willing to fully and faithfully follow the Dobbs decision? Without hesitation, Senator. Yes, Senator, without hesitation. Yeah, thank you.